G'day everyone and welcome back to the Hardball Gets AFL Show, brought to you by the magnificent Mazda BT50. You do ute. Today we kick around six points ahead of a huge weekend of footy. Remember if you haven't already, like, comment, subscribe, call your parents or your kids and tell them to listen to our pod. Alright, let's get stuck in. It is the Hardball Gets AFL Show. My name's Chris Robinson, in for Nick Rin. Joined today by Jackson Barrett and a man who's mulling over his own Eagles comeback, potentially, <laughs> maybe, Xavier Ellis. How are we doing, guys? Uh, morning, funnily Robert. enough, we did just mention uh, waffle numbers completely done this weekend. Mm-hmm. Will Schofield. I heard Chris Maston, maybe. Okay. Uh, and there was one other name I might have heard. Have you heard any other names, Jacko? Xavier Ellis. Uh, anyway, I've just literally just clicked on Twitter, and you know you click on the bell thing for notifications. Yeah. It's like uh, Premiership defender Will Schofield has uncalled time uh, to help out the former club. The first two comments underneath. Surely you're a chance to uncall time then, Xavier Ellis. Hey, Xavier Ellis, want to put your boots on again? Unfortunately, uh, the waffle's governed by Asada, and I've been using the former <laughs> anti drugs. <laughs> Uh, Just so, to get you through your radio so that gigs, rule, So that rules me out, unfortunately. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have put my hand up. But, uh, yeah, I've been using Peppy. So that call, <laughs> put a line through me. Mast and cleared to the Dunsborough Sharks. Yes. So uh, down there with Pat McGinnity. Yeah, and, of course, David Mundy for a game or oh, two or three later in the year. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So a decent Ma- side. But Mast has always Reed. been an unbelievable runner. Yeah, like he could, he he we fit and running for the Eagles as well. So. Yeah, yeah, must be so just tough. You do... Tough spots to go down to Dunsborough to play footy though. Yeah, oh, really difficult. Be, roll around, real tough. David Mundy hitting you on the chest. <sighs> Hit Sucks. up the bakery afterwards. Yeah, go to the poor ba- bakery. Shout out Taz's bakery. Straight to the pub. Oh, bang! The poor house, very nice down yeah, there. Yeah, no, I remember going to Dunsborough pub one night before a wedding, and I walked home with these kids. Uh, what about youths? And they'd stolen all the um, the witches hats from a uh, oh, road work. Outstanding. And I thought it was funny. Yeah. I'm like, oh, this Classic. is great. And the next morning I woke up and there's just witches hats all over Dunsborough. And I was like, I had nothing to do with that. <laughs> I was with them, but I had nothing to do with this. Ah, Classic play. Um, we're recording on a Thursday as opposed to our usual Wednesday time slot. That's because one of the three of us's calendar was marked... Jacko. Full day busy yesterday. No, no, it wasn't was Jacko the, and it wasn't me. I was yesterday, yeah. Zave, why couldn't you do our regular no, no, time slot a, yesterday? There's a footy show uh, coming out on Seven Mates, uh, Mick Barlow and myself. Called? Uh, Mad Monday. Mad Monday. Mad Monday. Um, I was okay at Mad Mondays. Mick Barlow nicknamed Bender Barlow, so he was probably pretty good at him too. Um, yeah, yeah so, what? Uh, and Hamish Brayshaw and Dean Margetts will give us a bit of an umpire insight if we ever need it, and Hamish will do some stuff as well. So, so stay. Uh, uh, May 1 on 7, mate, and you were doing some nice little... Starts May uh, 1, it does. Thank yep. you. I've got no idea when it and starts. And you were doing so some nice that. little promo photo yeah, stuff video, yesterday. Yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. Just take an all day photo shoot? shoot? Yeah, it was a long time. Okay. Yeah. What, what kind of humour did you provide? None, none. Dry. <laughs> no, no. It was just straight up and down. It's going to be shot a little bit, though, you just yeah, if anyone's interested. Like First Take, um, you know, the American First Take. Stephen where, A. Smith. Yeah, you know, sort of split screen with vision and stuff underneath and whatnot and over the top. So, no, it should be taking a so, little bit. So is that written in your contract that your face needs to be on the screen for the entire show? Was that the reason Not, not for in that? the contract with sex sales. So <laughs> Just giving the people seven, what they want. Seven can make up their own mind. <laughs> uh, are they shots we might say filter through to your Instagram over the next few weeks? The promo just shots. A couple of, yeah, just uh, a couple of cheapies. Yeah, get prob- them sent to you. Probably, to be honest with you, it's just good to see Mick and go for a couple of cold ones with him after. But uh, yeah, no, no there'll, be, there'll be a few shots here and there, I'd imagine. Excellent. Uh, well, hang on, actually, in all seriousness, get like the campaign brief and the photo shoot brief. Yeah. So... The photos they use as example of photos that are going to be taken on the on the thing that's sent out to everyone are ninety percent me anyway. So they must be a thousand photos there that they could probably just pick from. But I've done a whole new photo shoot. You're an experienced doing, promo. Doing, man doing as well. the exact yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah. And then also I get told I have to bring a um, wear a blue polo. I'm thirty five. I haven't got cupboards of polos. <laughs> I'm not 65. Hey, it'll come. It'll no, come. No, well, don't worry. I, I wore the polo. So I had the polo on for one little video clip yesterday. Now to put a shirt on. I thought, no way am I wasting this Tommy Hilfiger polo. I'm wearing this to work. <laughs> in I went to and Jesus, compliments left, right and centre. Anyway. That's great. Okay. We'll look out for that one. We'll look out for the shoot. That's going to be Can't wait. exciting. 
May see 1st. If we can find some behind the scenes footage as well. May 1st, get amongst it. Seven, mate. Monday nights. 7 30, good time. Yeah. Am I right in saying it's prime time? Seven o'clock. Seven. Even oh, more prime time. Boy. Just record yeah. Home and Away and then just yeah, watch I just that jump one seven, straight mate. over. Yeah. Just catch up on the Home and Away <laughs> stuff. Bang. All right. Has seven, mate, ever outrated seven, like sevens, seven? If there was ever going to be a time this for is it. it. Summer Bay. Thursday Watch night out. footy, probably. Save v Alf Thursday Stewart. night footy, you got seven, mate. Job yeah. sometimes. Yeah. yeah, okay. Fair call. All right. Well, should, we get, should we get into it? Uh, let's start with the tackling, right? So I think it's becoming a significant issue in the game. Uh, Tom Green this week, Taylor Adams this week, mm-hmm. Zach Merritt this week. Uh, Will Day, of course, the week before. Gary Rowan the week before. I'm not blaming the umpires. I'm not blaming the players. I just think there's a real grey area on, uh, speaking of Dima gets yesterday, he was more in the corner of the players need to take more ownership on not taking a player to ground. Well, that's not how footy typically works with coaching. You can't stay up, otherwise the ball moves on. Like, it's simple as that. Stick yeah. The ball doesn't move on if the ball's on the ground and pin, so yeah. that's a lot harder. But do we think that we're going to get into a stage, and we're all uh, watching the basketball at the moment, enjoying it, and plain and simple, how quickly does a whistle blow when there's a foul? Instantly, pretty much, doesn't it? So, are we? If fast forward five years, do we feel as though the whistles are going to be blown so incredibly quickly that uh, stoppages will go through the roof because the risk of keeping someone in a tackle? Because I can't lay a tackle and then lay it fifty percent for two reasons: the ball move forward, and you'll have a chance to get hurt yourself Mm -hmm. um, with a stiff arm, or you know, uh, don't argue or whatnot. Where do you see this going? Because at the moment, uh, something's changing and it's obviously changing under the AFL directive yeah. towards one way. It's a real tough one, isn't it? Because there's there's so many more tackles in the game now than there used to be. Um, but you're right. The, the quicker whistle, you do have concerns about, is that just going to make it so stop, start, yeah. stop, start? Anytime there's half a tackle laid... Yeah. Whereas, you know, 50, and you don't 60% want everything to be of the pinned. time, that play might have been able to roll on and yeah. you could, could get a hand pass away. And, and you don't want everything to be holding the ball either. Yeah. Oh, you didn't get rid of it. You're like, man, I've only had it for three seconds. Like, it's, I think it's teetering away with whichever way it goes. I think it's going to make the game look pretty shit. Whether it is holding the ball, quickly move it on, or it is ball up straight away. I don't know. I, I, I can't... Did you think any of the tackles were... Malicious? Yes. No. No. Did you want any of those players suspended? No. No. Do you think that it would be it would have been frowned upon by mothers who have 12-year-old sons playing football at local footy if mm. they weren't sanctioned? I don't think so. I had this conversation with uh, resident umpiring guru Craig O'Donoghue this morning who disagreed with me and also made him made me tackle him in the middle of the newsroom at about 9am right. so it was an experience yeah um, but I think we do need to get a little bit and there's a balance but I think we need to get a bit quicker on holding the ball like the okay. Tom the Tom Green one he had him had him had him nothing was happening what do you do next right <laughs> yeah. you've got to take him like you got to take you, him to uh, Josh you got to get rid of it or am I going to take yeah. him to ground what are we going to do yeah had to take him to ground yeah like had no like in a football context had no other choice but that even happens naturally though right like you you can't just capture someone in a standing yeah, yeah. tackle all, all the, the time, time forever. Yeah. Like you're, you're going to topple over at some point. Yeah, 100%. You're yeah. like, your legs get twisted, tangled. Yeah. But also, um, Tom Green's been in the AFL system for how long? For four years. Four years. Yeah. Josh Ward's been in for 18 months. Tom Green's 190 centimetres or whatever more. Yeah. Like he's a big fella. Josh Ward's a smaller fella. Like, now, now what's he meant to do? Like... Mm. You yeah. know when you're playing, when you at running Oz kick clinics, and you play tackling after, or you, my son in the backyard, I'm going to get you, and then you get him and like, rah, yeah. What what are we doing? Uh, well, in this, and I don't want to see anyone knocked out, but I certainly think in sport there's risk. I mean, just watching the um, basketball, then Joker just got whacked in the head, went down, um, probably a little bit over the top. Joker, can't made up your pop. No, really? Oh yeah, a no. bit. Rudy got him a little <laughs> bit. Anyway, but like, just things happen. I'd be more worried about getting the knee in the back of the head like Sicily copped on the weekend by Himmelberg. Mm. That's more vicious than a sling. That then a sling tackle's got to go than a uh, Zach Merritt tackle. The best example of what you're talking about, and I'm surprised in the scheme of the weekend that he didn't get done, but Josh Rotham on Tyson Stengel. I said the exact and, and it's, same yeah. thing. And yeah. if he hadn't broken his wrist Stengel, yeah. I reckon he sighted. But the fact that he's broken his arm or his wrist or whatever, 
it's gone, oh, that, that was impact to a different part of the body. Like, I yeah. thought his tackle was exactly the same as Will Day's, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that actually surprised me because they're so outcome based. I honestly yeah. reckon the only reason why is because he got out with a broken arm mm-hmm. and not a broken collarbone or mm-hmm. stiff neck or concussion. Maybe they're just trying to help West Coast injury crisis, which is uh, actually leads me into my point. If you oh, want to blow this iron, there segway. you go, bang, smooth. Bam, that's how we do it in the business. This is just a legitimate question about what happens. We know last year there were top up players and all the rest of it. What happens at West Coast if they legitimately can't name twenty six fit guys? in a squad, which is a, a real yeah. likelihood at some point over the coming weeks. And then secondly, do we need more of a flexible mechanism rather than just one mid-season draft that comes after round 12 or 13 or whatever it comes after? Do we need access clubs to have access to this kind of field at multiple times throughout a season? How do we do this better? So my first question on this, and to cl- we had this clarified this morning, you can't name an unfit player as an emergency. You can't name a player, I didn't realise this until today, you can't name a player as an emergency if you know full well they're not going to be able to play. So it really is like a pool of 26, right? But didn't we learn how to do this during the COVID period? Like was that COVID pool of players is that the hardest thing in the world to do to have top top up players yeah i don't like it you're either on the list or you're not so are you concerned about the local league impact as much as anything everything like um west perth who they lose west perth who came up for the couple of uh, what, uh, Aaron Black came uh, up. Blackie came yeah. up. Um, East Fremantle was the really East, ugly one. Uh, East Fremantle got slaughtered. Yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. They got emptied All of out. Their and somehow they went better yeah. without them. It was crazy. But uh, the, uh, there's something about being good enough to be on an AFL list, I think. There's something about looking after the state leagues. There's something about looking after the Yamo leagues. I, I don't know. I think that if you can't foster, and it's bad luck to West Coast, but I don't know. I think stiff shit. It's going to be really interesting, isn't it? If if this actually happens, yeah. Because I mean, if you can't name twenty six, then you still got four up your sleeve. You only need twenty two, and technically you we only twenty three. Need... Well, technically you only need eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> so until we get down to seventeen, don't don't come crying. Well, how close are we, Robbo? How close are we? Yeah. Well, very close. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've only if you crunch the numbers, they've got between I think fifteen and seventeen guys. Unavailable. That might have even been before how, how I factored in Hearn and Hearn. Long yesterday. Yeah. How seriously unavailable are they though? Well, I mean, that's that's the grey area, isn't it? When you're talking about the emergencies yeah. and guys that yeah. you don't intend to use, like your 25th and 26th guy, then I think it's subjective as to is this guy actually unavailable or well, is if they're listed just, as a we'd test, not play then, yeah, but, yeah, and also the first year rookie. Oh, I'd rather not play him, but he's on the list. If yeah. shit, he's in. Yeah. Like, I, I, yeah. Um, I'm big on that. If you're on the list, uh, and that was that's my point too, and I know it's really backfiring at the moment, the waffle, but if you had a waffle club that was full uh, and what was happening was um, clubs were going, we'll have five or six of the best waffle players and then we'll put our AFL pay and away you go and we're going to yep. hide our dud players in the twos. Mm. My opinion was always, if you're on an AFL list, I don't care how poor you are, you're playing seniors and you're not getting the advantage of hiding away these players. Yeah. If you're on the list, you're on the list. Don't draft them if they're not capable of playing. Yeah. And if you're underdone, it's, I know it's bad, but stiff, you're in. And uh, it's also with West Coast, it's time to see what these guys can do and just give you a list of full order. Yeah, right? yeah, and just what we are. These contracts have just got to be one year, don't they? Mm. Yeah. Going to be very interesting. So, West Coast, we're looking at the prospect of two NGA kids, so Jordan Baker and Tyrrell Dewar, mm-hmm. call a lot of Colts footy. Genuinely, neither of them in the top five in their Colts side. Yeah, no, sure. they shouldn't. Yeah, stay away from They're the Colts. They're going to struggle. If, if you're going down that path, they should. If, if, if any exceptions are being made, <clears throat> it shouldn't be to those kids who are, yeah. they wouldn't be in the top 1,000 players in the country. It, th- then you can maybe go to a state league if you have to, but I don't think go after those kids. Yeah. Uh, so, little stat this morning. No side has missed the finals since 1972, having been top of the ladder after, at any point after round five. Is that right? St Kilda's top where'd of the you ladder. Ri- where'd you St. rip St. that from? Or, uh, or did you do that research? Nah, look, I didn't, and I, I can't remember who it was on Twitter. Okay. Um, so, I've ripped it. But yeah. uh, 1972, the last time a team was on top of the ladder at any point after round five and missed. Okay. With that in mind, what uh, St uh, Kilda's uh, St Kilda, they've already beaten Fremantle, the Western Bulldogs, the Bombers, and the Suns. Three of those four, Suns, no good. The other three, we probably think I wouldn't are like be surprised. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if none of those guys made the finals though. Okay. 
But even so, then, four wins. They play North, Hawthorne, and the Suns twice. So if you North, say... North, Hawthorne, and the Suns. They so probably, Hawks will get over it. No, they won't. <laughs> they probably bank five more wins. Yeah. There. That's nine wins. That leaves 14 games left. If they win five of four to the 14 of the rest of them, yeah. they play finals. But what about the stories to their injury list? Like, I mm-hmm. think I went through it. Was it on maybe Monday? Billings would be in there, 22. King would be in there, 22. Memory would be in there, 22. Steel. Mm-hmm. Jack Caulfield. Steele would be in there. And, and the other ones that were out, like a Zach Jones Caulfield, yeah. one other, would be would be in those emergencies Bytel. that we saw. Yeah, Bytel, yeah the ones that are yeah. sort of in that grey area. Will that upset the apple cart a little bit? You know, sometimes the team, what's that saying? A, a, te- a great team will always beat a team of champions. Whatever. Yeah. The champion team will always beat a team of champions. Um Maybe Saints are in that real smooth wheelhouse where they don't have a star. I know Cal yep. Wilkie and them are stars of the competition, but the, the typical star that we love and, and turn up to watch, they don't have those players. And I reckon maybe it's like a band of brothers that their performances are done on that. They're a dollar forty or so to make the finals. So they're, they're leaning in that they're more favourable yep. to than not. Uh, their next month is a bit of a prickly one. I yeah, think it's a that, test, isn't yeah, it? yeah, I think the next month there might be Hawthorne in there, and then there might be three other goodies yep. in there. So Carlton, of course, on Sunday. Yeah, and I start. reckon uh, if one, if they can make their way through that, then I reckon smooth sailing. So they've really gone without a key forward, right? So Caminiti's 190 centimeters. He plays like a mid size, but super. That's so like, small. Runs that's really that's well. two centimeters taller than me. Mm. Yeah, um, they get memory back. If, and, the, and then they lose Caminiti. Yeah, they, they don't lose Caminiti. But then King is listed as four to six away. So Steel. he's coming back at some point. Steel. This Ross Lyon couldn't have dreamt of this situation, though. When his injury list compiled, he couldn't b- dream that. Did anyone here think that with all their injuries, they were going to be anything near a top eight side? No, nah, nah. definitely not. And and you, I always think about like a critical mass. When I saw King, when you see King and Membry both yeah. out for a round, you're yeah. like, oh, geez, that's a big red flag. It's like Geelong, and I'm not putting King and Membry in the same category as Cameron and Hawkins. No way. But if one of them goes, you go, well, at least I reckon I can probably get a handful out of yeah. Hawkins in the yeah. best case, or Cameron. Yeah. Same as Memory. At least I've got someone that can compete down the line if King's yeah, not yeah. there. They haven't had that. It's been crazy. Mm. Well, Zane Cordy's been the yeah. sort of makeshift, yeah. the makeshift one yeah. that's looked really Loves good. Um, Carlton this weekend. So, obviously, the test is uh, Mackay and Kerno. No player except Bobby Hill on Sunday night has kicked more than three against them. So, this team defence, the like running to get numbers to each contest has just been yeah. do unreal. You, do you put Harry – Do you put? I know we just mentioned Hawkins and Cameron. Do you put Harry and Charlie in that same category? They're number two seed. Behind yeah, those two, yeah, I think that's right. In yeah. the same, ca- like off them a little bit, off them. Yeah, yeah, I think they are too. Yeah, I agree. The one thing I'll say about Ross Lyon is that, with the exception of 2016, where it all fell in a massive hole for Freo, he usually has started seasons really well. Mm-hmm. Like even his last season at Freo, where he got fired, they started four and uh, four and two that season. So they do usually come out of the gate. Whatever he does in preseason and motivation and and all the rest of it. But they do have a tendency to wear as the season goes on. So I think that's and, a real watch for And Sinclair. high running game for St Kilda yeah. as well. So young guys yeah. dependent on running, you wonder how tired. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. think they're going to fall in a hole, but you wonder how sustainable it is I think at the, this level. the wins they've banked and the teams they play twice is what sort of got me over the line sure. for them being yep. the real-ish deal. Yeah, like it. Uh, just an interesting one that I was playing around with my brother and I, we were talking about... Um, Paddy Cripps' season so far, and I was like, oh, it's just a bit meh, Cripps' season. I know he had that monster against uh, the Giants, but in the end, I think we just agreed there was meh, whatever. Yep. Now, what award in the AFL is the big highest individual award? Brownlow Brown Medal. Low. Brownlow Medals. So I just had a little look at like the performances of Brownlow Medalists this season and how they're tracking. How we, uh, We'll start with Cripps. How, how would you sum up Cripps' season so far? Meh. Yeah, yeah, done good. A, done a job. Yeah, good. But yeah, I, I would. I don't think he'd be in the top fifty players this season. Like he's been good. He's been good. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Ollie Wines. Mm, he slipped back good. into a. He's become a like a role player. <laughs> role in the player midfield now though, right? But still yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah nah, not nothing special at all. Lockie Neal had a good game on the weekend. Best game was the weekend. But yep. prior to that, average. Average. Yep. Mm. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, Fifey. Haven't seen. Tom Mitchell. 
He's been, he's been uh, better I've, than I've thought, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've liked that. Better than you thought, but not yeah. typically Tom Mitchell. Like, oh, yeah, no. A different role. But also a different club and a whole new thing for him as well. Yeah. 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 And then the next one's uh, a Dusty Martin. And danger. Also a different role. Yeah. It's funny how like the game, the individual will award the Brownlow medalist who for years, like for five or six years, Dusty was unbelievable. Five or six years, Fife was unbelievable. Five or six years, Danger was danger, unbelievable. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's a, there's no real Brownlow medalist out there that's that you're like Wines, booking tickets to watch. Wines is the interesting one because we like and you guys and spoke so about it on wait, Monday. The goal kicking too. Yeah. Uh, zero goals to Cripper had ten last year this time. One goal to Ollie Wines this season, one goal to Lockie Neal this season. Three, I think, to Tom Mitchell, who kicked two in his first game, yep. like four. Yeah. Uh, so like the, it's not like their role is oh they're playing forward, pocket kicking goals. They're just not scoring, and then all their disposals are down. Wines is going to be the one where in fifteen years, we're like, as if that bloke won a Brownlow because he's going to like he was an okay, like yeah. he was a really good midfielder, won a Brownlow. Um, we probably most people agree that maybe Bontempelli was the best player that year, and now he's slipped back yeah. into like a role play with all the like the scrappers in there. Well, Bokey's Bokey's in a role role there yep. at the moment. Yeah, I know someone who backed Dolly Wines at forty one dollars um, for that year's Brownlow, so I thought he was the best player in the competition. But <laughs> <laughs> um, no, you're right though; it, it is really a uh, product of the actual team you find, unless you are that mega star five, the yep. mega star danger. If you can land in a team that is pretty good and don't have any stars. Like Ollie Wines, they won a lot, fifteen games or whatever yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So they had to have fifteen times three voters virtually is the way they voted. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, Ollie Wines had thirty three votes. Yeah. Ollie Wines had thirty three votes. Yeah. Um, and a little bit like that last year with Cripper because Sam Walsh was in and out. Uh, forwards typically don't get votes, and they won uh, enough games. They won enough yep. games, especially early when they were um, mm-hmm. going well. Just before we go off Carlton, because Cripper sparked this, I was listening to a radio show the other day, and they're like, oh, we give Carlton the mulligan for the weekend. You know, they had Adelaide. Gather round, start of a big round. Yeah. I, reckon, I reckon their mulligan was last year. Yeah, I when agree. When they missed the, the finals. Year. I agree. Yeah. I reckon I'm mulliganing that season. All right, that's your one after a long time of not doing anything. I'm shocked that that was the response for Carlton's yeah, performance. I agree. They got absolutely walloped. Yeah, we're, I, we're going to learn a lot about them against St Kilda because if they get broken down by. Ga- this, game of the round. Yeah. Game of the round because I think, as we just spoke about St Kilda, I think we're all still thinking, oh, I'm not certain about what this is. If they come out and Beats and killed it by six, seven goals. You go, all right. Carlton yep. are probably rung above where that, those guys are. But if St Kilda can somehow turn into either a game like it was on the weekend against Collingwood or get over the line, I don't know. I think there's uh, some, some concerns. We, we need to see that from Carlton this I week. Think so. I think a, a, a decent, a decent win. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's speaking of NBA, like we were before, it's NBA awards season. And I'm wondering why we don't have a most improved player category at any yeah, point, point in the AFL across any of the multiple awards that we have. Who's the clubhouse leader or who's in the conversation after the first five rounds of the season if we were to have such an award? I've got a couple of Most names scrolled down here. That's Mason Wood. Ah, uh, yeah. mate. Well, Mason Wood was, uh, I jokingly say, he was the best player in the competition. Who's, who's yeah, gone from sort of 16 yeah. touches to about 24 touches, he doubled his third, inside 50. He was the third forward at North Melbourne. At North, yeah. All that sort of stuff. And they couldn't make it no, work. No, that's a good one. Uh, um, Will Setterfield, yeah. Sam Draper. What else uh, have I got down uh, here? Will I know, Day. I know Cal Wilkie was in the All-Australian 40, but I reckon he's gone a different he's level. He's gone another level, yep. Uh, ba- Josh Battle. I don't know. So there's probably players there that... Maybe Ross Lyon doesn't have a great lineup because he wasn't there mm. last year. Obviously, does not what goes on inside the four walls. But I reckon St Kilda, for example, most improved. There's probably twenty players that have improved. Could make I mean, a case for a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Mason Wood, obviously, is the exceptional one. But more at the top end, Darcy Parish had mm-hmm. had a couple of years where we're like, we're not really sure what what this is going to be, and now How he's much like the hottest free made. agent in yeah. the comp. Caleb Sarong. Yep, yep. Sarong's gone up from that oh. high level. Tim English has gone up from that. High level Jordan to a Dawson. really, really high level. Dawson the same. Um, yeah. um, I'm just working around the working around the country now. <laughs> <laughs> and then at that so, sort of lower level, someone like a Josh Rochelle who's yeah. benefiting from a bit of a role change. He's funny, improved, but improved probably where we... Was his second year? Yeah. Rochelle, yeah. Yep. Improved to probably where we think he was going to go Last naturally. Last couple but of weeks, he's got there quicker. Jones. Yeah, Chase yeah. Jones had a big, some nice big couple of yeah. weeks. Missed yeah. the first two rounds of the season. So it's yeah, it's interesting. I always find this interesting with the NBA award as well. Like, do you take a guy who's gone from virtually not much to a lot, I or do you take a you guy know. who's gone from good to really, really? So really they gave good. it a jar a couple of years ago. Yeah, who was 
borderline all star or all star, whatever mm-hmm. it was. And then he gave it to Desmond Bain. And I reckon that is the perfect reflection of what most improved is. It's not a bloke who was picked two in the draft and was yeah. expected to be an all star. Sure. Average is a shitload. Just on it, a trajectory. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, it's the Desmond Bain so who came from count, nowhere, yeah. won the three point shooting con- that didn't be like yeah, yeah, top three point shooter. That's your most improved. The person who you don't expect to do much and then goes from a C grader to a B plus or a D to a B is far better than a B to an A. Yeah. So, so that think, counts against someone like Rochelle Ede yeah. and gives you more of a Mason Wood kind of type. No, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think that's probably it. Yep. So this one's a little bit of a credit where it's due someone that we were sort of quick to jump on early in the season and, and need to be equally quick to praise. Nick uh, Rin? Nick Rin. Oh, um, he's had his best year, Nick. Yeah, he has, well, he's had yeah. a good two weeks. He's had his best year. It hurts me to say it, but I'm only saying it because where is he sunning himself in Queensland? I think I he's like, just done the George Costanza from Seinfeld. I'm leaving on a high. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. He's just walked out. He's never coming back. There's no such thing as streamer. We don't know what he's been <laughs> doing for two years. Luke Jackson and Sean Darcy are starting to figure things out, right? Like well, what, the mix I, looked better against the Gold Coast. The, the mix only looks better because Sean Darcy's the Darcy's man. Darcy's doing 80%. Yeah. I think that's as obvious as anything. Yeah. It was obvious as when they got Luke Jackson and tip so, my hat to especially Sean Darcy. But yeah. Because when he comes... But he didn't start the season very well at all. No, no, he didn't. But he also wasn't given the keys at the start of the season either. It yep. was like... So they had 32 centre bounces, Frio, against yeah. Gold Coast. Darcy took 29 of them. There you go. And yep. Jackson that, three. Yeah, no, so that, that's the answer. And I think it's also a bit of a kick in the dick to Sean Darcy. Your best and fairest winner uh, and you go and get another Ruckman. <laughs> and you're like... And I know, and I know he wanted to come home, and it landed in the lap. Was a young star, yeah. So, but it's also a bit like, oh, hang on, I thought I was special, you know. Like, yeah, I yeah. thought I was meant to be yeah. something. Best and fairest at the age of twenty two was he, uh, and then they bring in Jackson. All the hypes around Jackson. Jackson does a bit of fifty, not fifty fifty, but it, the balance was de- definitely it, yeah. not that. Now that's perfect. Long he goes, <laughs> Sean, you're our man. If we can get two goals out of. Jackson up front. That's that's the Roy Lobb spot yep. taken. Uh, we don't need, as you saw last year, when they finished fifth or sixth, they didn't need a person kicking 100 goals or 80 goals or 60 goals. So if if Jackson can do that and take a clunk, kick a couple of nice goals on the weekend, yep. I agree. You tip your hat, but I think it all starts from Big Sean Darcy. So 13 disposals, two goals, three marks from Luke Jackson, which you'd I mean, maybe a few more marks around the ground, but you're pretty well taking no, you're that. Taking that. You're taking that. So they're now the fourth and fifth best ruckman between rounds three and five. And obviously, Jackson, a lot of those like ranking points come from kicking goals and sure. being around the ground. Tim English is number one. So you've got Tim 4B5, is a different the best world. combo, and then, or the best combo, yeah. and then English, who's been exceptional. So that'll be a, a battle. Freo is the, the competition leader for first possession from stoppage. Are they? Since round uh, and those numbers are probably a little bit inflated with Nan Curvis out, and Max Moyer Corner out, yeah. um, and whatnot. Playing but wits. Wits. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, and so Wits yep. as well. <laughs> we can keep going. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, how do you feel about tomorrow night, Dave? Frio, so, Frio Dogs. Coin uh, flip? A flip of the coin. Who do you like? Well, I was big on the Bulldogs last year to win that final. Mm-hmm. And they kicked the first seven. They started like it. Yeah, Bont had two to, by quarter time. Did they get to 40 to nil? it was 42 points up at once. Something like that. And then they got rolled. And I think the Bulldogs are the stepbrother to the Giants at times where I get sucked in by the Giants all the time. I don't think the dogs suck me in all the time. So undoubtedly, I'll probably have a couple of bucks on the dogs. And undoubtedly, Caleb Strong will be best on ground and Fremantle will win. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that toss the guy. But I Happy genuinely. Punching. I G, yeah, it's how it always works. I think. Um, any game, we don't really have the star in Perth, like the superstar you go turn up to watch, like Prime Fife. Well, now that Prime Fife and Prime Nick Nat know it's insane. Yeah. Any time a Bonton Pally or someone like that comes into town, um, Clary Oliver the two weeks earlier, uh, Petrarca, I, I genuinely go, right, the footy's on, how good's this? Can't wait to see who wins, but I can't wait to just watch mm-hmm. Bont. A Bont and Pelly f- uh, tag has been flagged with Aish, who's obviously yeah. not quite the, the size. Would you do it? Do you not bother? Is he is he untaggable? Do you reckon you can he's have not an un- He's not untaggable. You can, You've got to give you, him attention, don't you? Yeah, you can take his numbers down, but then he's smart enough to do other things. Like, he'll, he'll outmark Aish in four contested yep. marks and mm-hmm. get the ball moving quickly that way. And you go, well, shit. I'm a big tagger. I'm a really big tagger. You can't just let him waltz. Yeah, yeah, yeah even yeah. if you're not going to limit him to 17 touches, you can't just let him waltz, right? But also, I think that the one that I can't stand is right. Oh, Caleb, you go to Bont at the centre bounce, and then once the ball leaves the centre bounce, Ace, you come off the wing, yep. and then someone come up to half forward. 
and overcomplicate it all. I think if you're going to tag him, it has to be at the centre bounces because at the end of the game, clearances are nice. Centre bounce clearances are delicious because you get first crack at 1v1s. Uh, so if you're going to do it, do it from the top. Straight away, yep. go to him. If not, just let him go. All right, should we get into some hard ball bets? Hard ball bets. Thanks to the Tab Touch app. Brought to you, as always, by Tab Touch. Got the touch this AFL season. Better your bet with Tab Touch and always gamble responsibly. Call Gambler's Help on 1800 858 858. Have you paid for the Singapore Grand Prix or anything yet? What are we doing? <sighs> no, we haven't paid for anything yet. Hmm. We're, we're starting to rack up a small debt. <sighs> I missed last week. We both missed last week. Melbourne both shot us down last oh, week. Oh, that's fair. No, I thought Mel- were Melbourne at dollar forty or something. Uh, it's about that. Yeah, I thought that sure. was incredible yeah. value. I thought that was value. Yeah, against Essendon. Really thought Essendon were going to be exposed there, and then it just went the complete other way. So, Jacko, give us a winner on Nick Rin's behalf for this week. A little bit more conservative before okay. I hand the keys back to Rinny. Okay. Something for him to come back to. So, Adelaide and Hawthorne are taking the Crows at the line. It's twenty three and a half. Yep. Uh, and then Melbourne to bounce back and beat Richmond and Collingwood to take care of Essendon on Anzac Day, and that's 366. Okay, nice. I'm going a bit riskier than that. So I'll take Freo with the 1 to 39. I think it's you're never going to take Freo by more than that, the way that their uh, offense is going. Port Adelaide will cover the line against West Coast, which is 48. And then Brisbane and Adelaide to both get wins. That's paying 760. So a bit of a throw of the stumps. See how we go. Yeah, that Carlton St Kilda game looms really large. Yeah, looking as the forward game to of the it. round, right? Possibly two weekends in a row, Sunday twilight game in the round. We're going to see a lot of St Kilda good Sunday twilight games. Mm. Yeah. Do you want a quick quiz before we go? Let's yeah, go. I love a quiz. Lowest oh. amount of Brownlow votes to win a Brownlow in the last 40 years. Ben Cousins won it with 20 in 2005. Is that in the conversation? Not quite, no. Okay. So someone in the teens? Yep. Did Wanganeen win it with... 19, 18? 18, I think it is, yeah. Is that it? Nah. Is there something lower than that? Lower than that. Sorry, in the last how many years? Since nineteen eighty. What about the three-way tie? Where did that land? Uh, so it's Rashido uh, Buckley. I think it's nah, more than that. More than that, 20. Uh, so oh, yeah, something lower than wrong. Wanganeen's 18? Just. 17 votes, the tie between Greg Williams and Dipper. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, 17 Jeez. votes. You've got, to, you've got to get double that to be in the conversation now, don't yeah. you? If you're not getting low 30s. Feels like we break the well, record every year. Yeah. Cri- Cripper got 29, but he got subbed out quarter time when he was on track to get three and yeah. then missed games with that. So he would have thought he would have been in the 30s. But the last few ones 36 that. for Wines, 31 for Lockie, 33 for Fifey, 36 Dusty, 35 Danger. Mm, yeah. There you go. Just a little bit of Brownlow history. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the quiz on the way out. Thanks, Jacko. Thanks, thanks Dave. Thanks, guys. Uh, and thanks also to Mazda and the Mazda BT50. You do you. Enjoy your weekend of footy. Catch you next week.